Hello Automation Superheroes! My name is Andrew and welcome to Quantratech Solutions Online Superhero Academy. Our goal is to bring you a series of online demos, webinars, and all the technical know-hows about smarter industrial automation. In this video, you'll learn how to set up the Backup CX-9020 embedded PC for the first time. This is the Beckhoff CX9020 Embedded PC. Now, what exactly is this? Good question. Well, it is a computer, but not just any computer. It is an industrial PC. With the word industrial, it means this computer is intended for industrial purposes such as manufacturing, energy, milling, water, and many more. The CX9020 is an embedded PC a compact DIN rail mountable controller. It is a programmable PC-based controller with 1 GHz ARM Cortex CPU and the operating system is Microsoft Windows Embedded Compact 7. The CX9020 comprises the CPU with two microSD card slots, the internal 1 GB DDR3 RAM, and 128KB NovRAM as non-volatile memory. The basic configuration also includes two switch Ethernet RJ45 interfaces, four USB 2.0 interfaces, and a DVID interface. Optionally, the unit can be ordered with a field bus, serial, or audio interface. The connection for the back of I.O. system is directly integrated into the CPU module. The unit offers automatic bus identification, which is called the eBus. Twincat automation software transforms a CX9020 system into a powerful PLC and a motion control system that can be operated with or without visualization. Now in this video, I'll be demonstrating on how to set up the CX9020 controller. This includes mounting, wiring of supply, remote connection, and the basic configuration. So let's try to power up the unit. The CX9020 has a supply voltage of 24 volts DC. First, let's mount the unit into a DIN rail by releasing these locks and also the bottom one. The voltage source has been connected to the power supply unit successfully when the two upper power supply terminal LEDs light up in green. The left indicates the supply of the basic CPU module and the terminal bus. The right LED indicates the bus terminal supply via the power contacts. Now that my computer is directly connected with the CX9020 controller, the next thing to do is identify the IP address of the CX. In order to do that, we must first set the IP address of the PC or the programming laptop into DHCP. Just go to the network and internet settings, click on change adapter options, and go to the Ethernet adapter. To check whether this is the right Ethernet adapter, you could disconnect and connect the Ethernet cable. Disconnected and connected back again. Right click here and go to properties. Go to Internet Protocol version 4 and click on properties again. So currently, the IP address of my Ethernet adapter is 192.168.0.20. We should set it to obtain and click on OK. Close. To identify the current IP address of my controller, 
we need to go to the edit routes of the twin cut which is located here right click on this twin cut icon and go to router edit routes and click on add since we do not know yet what the IP address of the controller is we click on broadcast search uncheck the unnecessary adapters and leave the one behind that we are using click on OK now we could see the name of the CX the current IP address AMS net ID TwinCat version and also the OS version but we are not yet connected so now that we know what the IP address of the controller is we could access the controller remotely and then we could change the IP address from there into static so to access the controller remotely we're gonna use the Serhost. This Serhost application is downloadable in the internet also. This will allow us to have a remote connection on the controller itself. Open the application, click on file, and connect. Then type in the IP address of the CX for the host name. No password, and click on OK. So now we could access the CX9020 remotely. So this is the interface of the Windows Embedded Standard. So to change the IP address, let's go to the control panel of the embedded PC. Click on Start, Control Panel, and go to Network and Dial-Up Connections. Double-click on FEC1. Now we could see that it is currently set to obtain an IP address via DHCP. Now we would specify an IP address. Let's set the IP address into 192.168.0.10. and the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 Click on OK Now, we cannot access the CX anymore because we have changed the IP address into static So if we try to connect again we cannot uh, access the CX anymore Close the share host Now that the CX9020 has a static IP address, our programming PC should also have a static IP address. Let's go again to open network and internet settings. Go to change adapter options. Right click on Ethernet. Go to properties. IPv4. Go to Properties and set a static IP address. Now we'll use 20 and a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 as well. Click on OK, close, close the network connections and close the network the control panel so to check if we have a connection with the CX or if it's communicating we could try a ping command type in run in the search bar type in CMD and click on OK type in ping space and the IP address of the controller which is 192.168.0.10 press enter and we could see that we have a reply if the cable has been disconnected and you try the ping command 
this is what would happen. And if I connect the cable again, and try another ping command, we'd see that it has replied. Close the command, and let's access the CX9020 remotely again via Serhost. Type in the new IP address that we set on the CX, which is 192.168.0.10, and then click on OK. So the basic configurations can be accessed on the control panel, such as the CX configuration. In the general tab, we can see the information of the system, which is the device name, image version, CX config version, frequency, and then the TwinCat, we would see what, what version the TwinCat is, TC build, and also the AMS net ID. Upon clicking the license info, we can check if the CPU or the controller has a valid or uh, expired license. In my case, the TwinCat license for my CX9020 is expired. Network adapter and also the file version information. We could also check if the firewall is enabled and other miscellaneous settings. Date and time, system, we could see that it's running on Microsoft Windows Embedded Compact version 7, ARM Cortex processor type, the memory, and also we could change the device name of the CX. So. If we're done with the configuration with the CX, we could close our ser host and disconnect us from the remote connection. The next thing that we'll do is add the CX to the programming laptop's routes. Go to the TwinCat icon, right click, router, edit routes, add, and type in the set IP address of the CX. Click on enter, and now we could see that we are already connected. The X symbol indicates that the CX is already connected with this programming laptop. If not, just click on IP address and add it, add it to its route. When it's connected, just close the window. And now we have already established a remote connection and already added the route of the controller. That's it for this video. If you want to learn more about Contratech Smarter Automation, you can visit our website at www.contratech.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social media accounts. See you in the next video!